Hello and welcome to Coffee Break with Microchip Technology where we discuss trending topics and ideas. I'm your host, your temporary host, Austin Caphammer, filling in for Ross Ayat today. And today's topic of discussion is going to be mission assurance in harsh environments. And with me today is subject matter expert Bob Vampola. Bob, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me here today, Austin. Yeah, absolutely. And before we get started, as usual, we're going to go ahead and send it back to the booth so we can find out a little bit more about today's episode from my colleague, Aaron Sweeney. Hi, Austin. Thanks so much for having me this morning. And thanks to our audience for joining us. We are currently live on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, and our experts are standing by in the chat to field any audience questions. If you don't wanna submit your question via the chat, feel free to email livestream at microchip.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on LinkedIn to keep up with all things microchip. I do have one more announcement this morning. Uh, we are giving away the chance to win a free Coffee Break mug. So all you have to do is click the link in the description below and fill out the survey and you'll get a chance to win. So that's it for me. Back to you, Austin. Perfect. Thank you so much, Aaron, for providing a little bit more uh, color on our, uh, how our uh, audience may interact with us today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right to it. So Bob, Mission Assurance, could you uh, start by letting the audience and uh, myself know a little bit more about Mission Insurance? Yes, thank, thanks for the question, Austin. Yeah, so, uh, so Mission Insurance is all about the process of identifying and mitigating um, all, uh, 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 all issues and problems with, with a design that could uh, potentially threaten the mission success. And so, um, so in that process, you have to build in method, uh, methods in, to uh, identify those problems at a component level, starting from the design phase, all the way through production and test phase, and finally through the, the final um, uh, mission uh, deployment. Um, and so you can see that it's very important for customers to actually have 
selected the right level of uh, reliability and quality of components uh, that they're going to design in um, in order to um, address those deficiencies. Um, and that's where microchip really comes in. So m microchip uh, can assure our customer base that the products uh, that they're ordering from us uh, will meet or exceed their mission requirements um, and they'll be able to handle those uh, harsh environments that they may encounter. Perfect. So we know a little bit more about mission assurance now. It certainly encompasses a lot of topics. Uh, as far as harsh environments and mission assurance in harsh environments, could you expand a little bit on how microchip, uh, cons what, what constitutes a harsh environment or how we qualify a harsh environment? Uh -huh. uh, well, um, I mean, a harsh environment comes in many forms. So it really depends on the application. So uh, if you look at applications uh, in aerospace and defense from the ocean um, and submarines to, to tanks, perhaps, um, into air aircraft, um, the harsh environments include things like extreme uh, temperatures or um, you know, uh, sensitivity to, to uh, moisture uh, and even uh, severe shock and, and thermal uh, vibration or the shock and, and vibration. So um, it's, it's, it's important in, in those particular applications that you have products um, to, um, to, that, can withhold, that can withstand uh, those, uh, those, those issues. Um, so from a micro, uh, microchip perspective, um, the, the products that we that we're, that we're uh, the products that we're providing in in, in those particular environments are um, tested. You know, we, we take them through to take them through a test. We uh, we offer several different uh, quality and reliability levels of those products. Um, you know, and, and ult ultimately uh, um, can provide our customers a a product that that will handle those various environments. You can imagine, for example, the vibration environments that to happen in a tank and battlefield, you know, and or the, uh, the uh, vibration or shock that can happen from an aircraft, a jet flighter that's actually flying at Mach 5. Um, right. Yeah, so so uh, it's very important that a proper selection of components are made, you know, in those environments and um, in order to avoid those uh, discrepancies. Um, and, uh, and that's what microchip can offer. Okay, so you, you talk about it's important to, uh, to, to select the proper component in those environments. So what sort of components or, or offering do we have at microchip uh, for these harsh environments? It's a, a great question. So we have a, a broad product uh, portfolio of, of devices. So uh, most people don't know that microchip has over 71,000 uh, components in our portfolio for aerospace and defense for high, reli high reliability parts. So we have uh, a portfolio that includes from, uh, from discrete uh, uh, diodes and transistors all the way up to complex complex FPGAs and microcontrollers. So we also provide, um, um, uh, our portfolio provides uh, analog to digital converters, non-volatile memory. Uh, we include in that some tele uh, telemetry and motor controllers. Um, and from a timing perspective uh, for these devices, uh, we have everything from a quartz, os quartz and MEMS oscillators all the way up to these uh, uh, ultra precise um, stable uh, 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 chip scale atomic clocks. You know, and then to power all of this, of course, you've got to power these devices. We offer DC to DC converters and then uh, and PLL uh, regulators. Um, and more recently, we've been adding to our portfolio an expanding portfolio to include some of the network uh, chips, uh, networking chips, including Ethernet FIs. Wow. So, yeah. yeah. So well, what, what sets microchip off a, a little bit different from uh, uh, some of our competitors that are out there is that we can offer all of these comp components, not, starting not just from a commercial off-the-shelf uh, uh, device or what we'd call COTS, but we can basically give our customers options all the way up to a rat hard by design. So in a COTS plus environment, to handle those extended temperatures that we talked about, uh, we, we can offer that in a high rel temp plastic. Um, a, a device, and, and we're building parts basically to, to work towards the evolving sta standards. As we move to aerospace, uh, 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 the aerospace and, uh, or the space uh, type applications and, and far space, um, we can offer parts from a rad tolerant uh, version of our devices all the way up to what we call rad hard by design. Um, and with that rad hard by design, it's very simple f uh, 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 um, for us to take some of those parts and do what we call a, a, a substandard QML uh, part uh, for those rad hard, by, uh, rad hard by design parts in order to really address the markets for a low earth orbit, for geostationary orbit, as well as the uh, 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 interplanetary uh, type applications. Wow, so we've, we've talked a little bit about this uh, COTS Plus qualification, this, uh, this uh, rad hard by design. Uh, what other sort of uh, differentiators or, or deciding factors might lead a designer to elect microchip as opposed to an another option? Yeah, so I mean, the microchip advantage really, uh, in my opinion, the most important is probably our commitment to the aerospace and defense marketplace. So we, we have a dedicated business unit uh, with uh, functional area experts. We have a sales and embedded systems engineering team out there that understands the aerospace and, de uh, and defense market very well. 
Uh, we also have an expanding portfolio of products uh, specifically for the aerospace and defense that we continue, uh, continue to build on and bring, bring new products uh, into the marketplace. And we're also willing to uh, develop custom products uh, f uh, for our customer base. So uh, another key uh, factor is longevity, is the amount of time that we keep products in, in production. Uh, you know, and we've had products, for example, that have been in productions uh, uh, for f over 40 or 50 years, for example. Um, experience and heritage is also important. So uh, the heritage is what we say is, what, is, is having things designed into programs uh, for long periods of time. So the customer base gets a good satisfaction when they know they're working with a customer that has gained this heritage and has the experience and knows, uh, knows how to build, build parts correctly uh, uh, for those missions. And then from a regionalization standpoint, you know, we're a worldwide uh, a, a company, uh, but we have to take care of the specific, uh, ish, uh, specific c compliance and regulations within various governments and agencies. For in the U.S., for example, working with NASA or the DOD and the DLA. Um, and then if you look over in Europe, uh, you know, uh, working with, um, with uh, DGA and even ESA and, you know, following through into Japan and uh, uh, in India with JAXA and, and ISRO. So it's important uh, that we have a team in place that can handle um, you know, uh, all the issues that uh, evolve around uh, regulations and, and compliance uh, and working with those uh, collaboratively with those, uh, uh, those agencies. Uh, you know, and then the f uh, another comment would be on our, our ability to, uh, you know, to fab devices uh, within our own fabs. So we have our own fabs, um, as well as a qualified, uh, manufac qualified manufacturing locations around the world. So in addition to what we have uh, in the U.S. with uh, in Tempe and Gresham and Colorado Springs, uh, we also have, you know, over uh, MMT in Thailand, and and uh, we've also uh, and some test facilities over in uh, in France that we use. And these are all qualified area uh, qualified areas areas for aerospace and defense. Um, and Ennis Island, Ireland, for example, with the largest 19500 uh, uh, qualif qualification uh, plant in, in the world. So it sounds like sounds like we're just about everywhere. And uh, as far as uh, as far as that longevity, Bob, I want to I want to touch on that. You know, at Microchip, I, I, I've heard a lot about you know striving to not end of life products. So pairing that with longevity, you know, I think that's a really good way to, to build trust with our client base. Yeah, that's that's very good. So what's important to our customers when we talk about longevity is the ending end end of lifing of of components. And Microchip has a policy to minimize to the best of our ability. Um, the end of lifing of components, and that includes uh, things like doing a, 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 where we have to, if we've got a, a, a third party uh, a, a fabricator or manufacturer that we're using, is to take, take in wafers and do wafer inventories and do what we can do to minimize uh, end of lifing of product. And when we do have to end of life product, then we'll, we'll give proper notice and give our customers reasonable notice of, hey, we just absolutely can't produce this product anymore, uh, and, and give them some time to, uh, to adjust for that. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Bob. And as far as our, our customers and, and where others that might be viewing this show could find more about our aerospace and defense uh, uh, information? Yeah, it's very, very easy. You just go to, of course, microchip.com forward slash aerospace. And uh, at that website, you can uh, find uh, links to where you can sign up to uh, newsletters. If you want to get a quarterly update delivered directly to your, your email, we have our aviation and defense newsletter that you can sign up for, uh, as well as our space brief. And there you'll find uh, and get uh, automatic updates on all the latest new product offerings and what we're doing in the industry. Perfect, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Bob, for that presentation. And now is the time that we go ahead and send it back to my colleague again in the booth, Aaron, and uh, see if the audience has any questions for us. Hi, Austin. Yes, we do have some questions. And the first one is coming to us by way of email. So it is, uh, what role will microchip parts be playing in the v v EVTOL market and more electric aircraft trend? Yeah, so the, the, this is actually an exciting a, a, a trend that we see right now going in into aerospace. Um, the EV2L, EV2L is the, uh, stands for Electrical uh, Vertical Takeoff and Landing. And so if you think about it, this is a, a new uh, concept of taking what we see in our rideshare programs, for example, and taking them from the ground and putting them in the air. And so power is going to become very important in these programs uh, and the more electric aircraft. So it brings a lot more content in, in, into play. And most importantly for microchip is, uh, you know, we've launched sil uh, uh, silicon carbide products that I think will play a big role in and, uh, and helping to deliver the power uh, in those particular applications. Great. Thanks, Bob. We have another question by way of email. Uh, does Microchip have solutions on both LEO and deep space applications? 
Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So in the one chart that we had, I had showed um, uh, pre previously that was up, we, uh, we offer uh, devices from all sorts of different quality and reliability and radiation uh, support levels. So we handle from a low earth orbit, we can handle plastic, uh, rad tolerant de uh, designs for things for low, or low, low earth orbit, all the way up to parts that have been designed and tested and taken all the way to rad hard by design for, for those long term type missions or inter interplanetary missions. And so we have a broad Odd a selection of components that uh, our customers can choose from, depending on the the, uh, the typical orbit that the, they may be in. Great, thank you. And then our last question: um, Does Microchip have a policy regarding government-rated orders? Um, uh, yes, we do. So as I talked about before, in the relationships that we have in the various agencies, even around the world, um, you know, and specifically, I can talk in the U.S. Uh, you know, on uh, rated orders, what we call a D-pass, which is a, a defense uh, priority allocation system. Um, our systems at Microchip are set up to uh, to accept orders under under this. We understand how the ratings and the priorities work. Um, we follow what we'd call the defense uh, federal acquisition rules, um, and so we are we are we are very well. Um, um, in tune with what the requirements are to meet the requirements for uh, for what we call DPAS or defense uh, rated orders. Great, and we actually have a question from Michael on YouTube. What makes a device RHBD? Is it a different production node with larger gate structures or the packaging? So it's it's more so rad hard by design is more so um, from the, from the silicon. So rad hard by design is a device that has started um, from from the get go. Uh, to become a radiation hardened part. So it requires you to have specific libraries uh, when you, as you're building the, 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 the different IP up in the device. It also requires you to have a special process when you go and actually uh, uh, build this part uh, at, at a fab, uh, fab location. Uh, and then uh, the packaging and test, of course, are all important as well. But rad hard by, de by design means you started from ground zero uh, in intending to bring this into space. Great, and then a qu another question from YouTube. Um, do you have low cost aerospace components for small companies who can only afford chips to work on their project? Um, well, the answer is yes. We have, I mean, we've got parts that cost as, you know, as low for uh, aerospace, as low as a few dollars, and, and parts that uh, cost more than a car. So for, you know, for those, those uh, customers that are looking, looking for uh, low cost parts, the one thing that I'd like to point out is that a lot of the devices that we have, you can buy a commercial device and follow that flow all the way up, even to rat hard by design, uh, and you can use the same tool set and, and the same eval kits, you know, and the same ecosystem from the start of your project all the way up to the end of the project so that you can actually get a lower cost part while you're in development. And then, and then you can buy the correct quality level of part uh, that you need that's going to satisfy your mission requirements. Great. Thanks so much for answering those audience questions, Bob. And if we did not get to your question uh, in this episode, please email livestream at microchip.com and one of our experts will get that answered for you. And just a reminder, please visit the links in the description below. That's where you can find the link to the survey and some aerospace and defense related links. Back to you, Austin. Perfect, thank you so much, Aaron. And thank you to our audience for contributing those questions. So that just about wraps up uh, this episode four of season five. And to our audience, make sure that you locate the remainder of our episodes at microchip.com forward slash coffee break. You'll be able to find past episodes as well as uh, planned or on the docket episodes here that'll be coming in the, uh, in the couple, next couple of weeks. Speaking of which, in, uh, in about two weeks, we will be reconvening to discuss power over ethernet in a special holiday themed episode of Coffee Break. So make sure to stay tuned for that one. Bob, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey. Aaron, thank you so much for helping me out back there. And to our audience, once again, thank you so much for joining us this week. Make sure to uh, join us in a couple of weeks for our uh, holiday episode. Have a good one. All right. Thank you.